measured surface. It shows some of the typical features, though. This is a relatively small one. Notice that the head had broken off on this one. It's been cemented back together because it got knocked down, like I said. It's got the classic arms, the hands, the fingers are here, sort of holding and framing the belly and the belly button. And also, I want you to walk around this, and on the back of this one in particular, from a geologic point of view, you can see how it contains fragments of rock in it. Because essentially, you think of this as being ejected from a volcano and then coming oh, down. You can serve, mm -hmm. you see all the different fragments of volcanic rock and bedrock that got thrown up and then, um, you know, consolidated oh, down. Don't There's a large, don't large touch um, mass of volcanic top. Is that making sense to everyone? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So, this is the type of thing you want to look at, and many of them that we'll see. Again, this is highly weathered, but you can see the pieces of actual rock. It's sort of a mass of sort of hot, molten, sticky, like um, ashes and that type of thing that all congealed together, of course, in, you know, geologic time, and then they carved it out. But actually, it's interesting because to carve something like that, a lot of people say it's very soft, you know, relatively soft, and you can rough it out. But then, and originally, before they were weathered, you know, I think they put quite good surfaces on them, and you've got very different, this is much harder, for instance, than this rock here. So that's no mean feat. That's not an easy feat mm -hmm. to make that a nice surface. And we'll see some where you've got carving on the back, that type of thing. Like right. I said, this is a very um, highly weathered one, but it shows some nice features. Uh -huh. um, so you can see, and here you can see this was broken, of course, and it's been cemented together again. This site is called Tahai on the island of Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island. And this is where we find one of the large Moai figures that has eyes in it. However, what most people don't know is the fact that the eyes were put in by the National Geographic Society and they were not put in properly. The eyes should not look to the heavens they should look straight across to the land because this was an ancestor and so the ancestor gazes inland towards the village where he used to live. In that way he gives comfort to the people who live there or lived there and they can look back at him, look in his eyes and ask him for advice. So the ancient aliens idea that he here is looking at the heavens is probably wrong. At least the oral traditions of the islanders say that the eyes do not look up towards the heavens. So he's not looking for aliens to come back and help him or fix him. But the thing is that this ahu, or where this moai is, you can clearly see that its head is cocked back and the angle of the eye orbit would make it naturally look upwards, not straight at the village, but up to the sky. So possibly what this is representing, and Robert Schock has corroborated that, is the fact that maybe some of these were put into position with the eye looking upwards and with the head cocked back, looking as a protective being or entity uh, to stop the possibility of another one of these cataclysmic events coming from the sun, as has been more or less shown happened 12,000 years ago. So that's a little bit of an insight that we worked out today, as far as I can tell. So we're at the site called Vinapu on Easter Island. This is the southern part of the island, and this is where, and the only place, where we find stone workmanship similar to what is called Inca. But the more research you do, the more you find out that the Inca didn't do this work, it's older. The uh, ancient work, beautiful stonework in Peru, is older than the Inca. And the same builders who did that, thousands of years prior to the Inca, probably were responsible for this one as well because it's so precise.
and where you see examples are the flat surfaces like in here. Now the gap that's here is most likely the uh, result of earthquake activity because the precision is astonishing. These two would have fit together almost perfectly when they were made as evidenced by what we can see here. And so over the course of hundreds or thousands of years either the descendants or other builders came and they made additions to this structure but also quite possibly took parts of the structure down. This is the base of one of the Moai, the big human figures. And these are two of the Moai that have fallen, knocked down in the 19th century because the Christians who came here told the native people that these were evil, idolatrous images. And over here in the background, what you're seeing is probably a later culture and their attempt at replicating the earlier, which is this. So get out of your mindset the idea that culture is in constant evolution. We have examples in Peru, Egypt, etc., where clearly higher technical cultures existed, in, at least in terms of stonework, prior to us and disappeared because cultures come in waves, wave and a trough, rise of a culture, collapse of a culture. So again, here on Rapa Nui, Easter Island, what we have is an example of a highly evolved culture capable of megalithic work of great accuracy that may have been here long before most of the ancestors of the present population. Not all of the ancestors, because the people who live here are clearly descendants of every person who has ever existed on the island. So if there was a, a master mega uh, megalithic culture here, the people of this island would also be descendants of those people as well. These seven Moai are called the Navigators, and they're the only ones out of the more than 900 on the island that actually look at the ocean. All the other ones look inland. Well, this is, this is definitely a tunnel. a tunnel. Or not a tunnel, it's a cave. Yeah, definitely. You have to hold on to the tree. This is a cave on the island of Rapa Nui, otherwise known as Easter Island. And it's quite massive going in this way. So this clearly could have been a place of not only habitation, but also of refuge. Give you a sense of scale of where I'm at. Whoa! Not really. It's uh, there's water dripping, but wow! Actually, we wouldn't need a flashlight because it looks like there could be a tunnel down here at the bottom. Whoa! Watch out! Okay. So of course I didn't bring a flashlight, but do you? No, that's actually, um, Matt has one. Come on down, Matt. Be careful, though, because it can be a little bit slippery. But this is inland, a couple of miles from the ocean. Actually, Matt, if you come right down here, 
where I'm at. We'll see if it's covered up or if it's a dead end. It's oh, impo- has our, has our got a threat? Well, it's impossible to tell without, you know, your flashlight. Actually, no, I can feel air coming up. Okay, wow. Whoa! Look at that. Can you get that wow. one? Or the light? Well, actually, I can go down there if you can. Yeah, take that. Actually, oh, okay. Water dripping. <laughs> oh, God, it keeps going. So at that point, you're on your hands and knees. Uh, probably not too wow. Great of an idea. Oh, there's a pool of water in there. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Is. Cool. Wow. Like a natural spring. Uh, well, or just the water coming down from here. But here, I'll uh, give you the flashlight if you want to come down. No, you can see the water trickling as it as it's going down to fill the pool. But if you get on your hands and knees, you, you could go deeper, you know, quite a bit deeper. Quite cool. Very More ways than one. Wow. So That's Matt amazing. has decided to venture forth. Any idea how far there it goes, Matt? Down at the water's edge. Uh-huh. This room, I would say, is about 50 foot wide. Yeah. Probably rather deep. Yeah. Probably by about 75 to 100 across itself. You're kidding. Round to the right, and I can't tell whether that's an indentation or a continuation of the tunnel. Wow. Can't take a picture. Yeah, take a picture. This is amazing. Here, do you want my flashlight, Corey, if you're going oh. forward? Oh, you got one on your head. Oh, you you got a head one. Yeah. Great. I left mine on the bus. It didn't like, occur to me to bring it, right? But I brought it there. Because the rain, the window, mm-hmm. when the statues is expo- the, 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 the stone, the yeah. tough stone, this is the, the stone of the volcano and the material of the statues. Mm-hmm. It was a, a road. Yeah, delicado, delicate, yeah. yeah. Um, have they, they've excavated some just in the last year or so, right? They've been excavating um, some recently? Here they s- two excavate. 55 and 86. Okay. Can we see those where they This reached? is the 86. Okay. So Before is 55. Okay. And in just recent years, this year, last year, did they excavate some? Se me puede ayudar. O se ha excavado este año o el año pasado? Se ha excavado estatuas, pero es en al interior. Oh, they have excavated okay. some, but inside the quarry. Oh, you can't see those. No se puede ver. Can we go see those? We can't see those. They're no. on the other side of the quarry. Inside. 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 The volcano. The volcano. Inside the volcano. The volcano. This is outside the volcano. Right. Are we allowed inside the volcano? Está permitido entrar? No. No. Dentro del volcano. No. Uh, there, uh, can you ask her if there's any special way we can get inside the volcano just for a few minutes? No, no, no. El, la, la llegada para el tema turístico no es debido. Now, unfortunately, what you just heard is quite typical of a lot of ancient archaeological sites, not just on Rapa Nui, but also many other locations where even seasoned professionals like geologist Robert Schock is denied to go into and look at the interior of the crater where many of the moai have been fully excavated showing their complete bodies. So from this location you can look back at the major site called Tongariki where you have the 15 big moai on an ahu. Very impressive um, island to visit. And then here In the quarry area itself, you see unfinished moai, still in situ. 
And here again we have another example of one that was carved or being carved out of the bedrock and was abandoned for some reason. This is the largest one that would have ever had been created, approximately 200. How the local people were planning on actually lifting it up and moving it, of course, is a major problem. That's just part of the mystery of this amazing island. And again, if you didn't know, each one of the 900 plus of these moai are complete bodies. Here we simply see the heads and the necks, but the full bodies are underground. The mystery being, how did they get buried in the first place? Dr. Schock believes that they are at least 12,000 years old in some cases. From what we can see at this site, which is where the navel of the world is located, is that on either side of the central ahu, which is platform, the sophistication of the stonework gets less and less sophisticated to the left and right of the core. And I'll show you, because this is the right side. And as we go towards the center, it gets better. The better, like we see in Peru and Bolivia, is probably older and not the other way around. So you see at this point you have stones fitting together reasonably well. And they look like they've been shaped to fit, but it's over here. This section. This is where we see it almost as though technology was employed. But unlike Peru, this wall is about a foot thick. So it's nothing in comparison to what we see in Peru, where it's like three feet or six feet thick, still. Here we have possibly the tightest fit. And then to the left side again, it starts to go less and less sophisticated. So it's at this place where you find quite precise stonework. The oldest part of the Ahu, which makes sense because this is also where we find the most important thing on the island, site on the island, of Rapa Nui, and that is we find the navel, which is over there, where we'll get to next. So it's good to make an offering first of water or something and then approach. You offer a gift first at all sacred sites. You don't simply walk in. You offer a gift and the site recognizes that you have come and there is reciprocity. You simply go in, try to extract energy, the site will say no. It doesn't matter where on the planet you go, it's always the same story. This is not the center of the island, is it? No, this is the center of the land. This is the holiest of holies on this island. It's the most important thing there is. This, I was told, is the oldest of the Moai on Rapa Nui, Easter Island. Located at Anakena Beach, which is the only sandy beach on the island. And this is where Hotumatua, who was the first uh, ruler, this is where his double hull canoe landed. No one knows when, or no one definitively knows when.
I've heard from local people that that was about 2,000 years ago, and Western scholars disagree. However, there is a large ahu ceremonial platform here with one, two, three, four, five, six moai in different stages of uh, decay. The stone is originally from the quarry, uh, which is miles from here inside and outside of the crater called Rano Raraco. So, also at Anakena, aside from this moai of one of the sons of the founding Polynesian called Hotumatua, there's also this very large, or quite large, ahu with bird depictions. And seven moai. You can see the head of one which has been recycled into the wall. But I get the feeling, based on the quality of the craftsmanship in the front, that the front is in fact the oldest part. So we're going to have a look at that right now. Give you a feeling for the landscape. As we go around, look not so much at the, the moai themselves, but look at the, the wall underneath it. Here's a moai that's fallen. And look at the curve of the lower wall, and even more importantly, have a look at this joint. There. Clearly deliberate, and it's also at the other end. The red top knots represent the hair color of the of these first people. Polynesians in general don't have red hair, so where does that come from? My suspicion is the west coast of Peru. This is the latest moai to be reinstalled on its Ahu platform, just outside Hangaroa, the little town on Rapa Nui, Easter Island. But what's intriguing is just where I'm standing are seemingly fine, more finely finished stone blocks of what could have been an ancient ahu. And uh, the workmanship is really quite good. You can see how these blocks were shaped. Moai in the background. Uh, the question being, is it lack of resources that hasn't allowed this one to be restored yet? Especially this exceptionally good piece of stone here where Hugh Newman is standing. 
very dense basalt according to Dr. Robert Chalk. It's completely different to uh, a lot of the other rock really, isn't it? Like oh yeah. Is. This is not, this isn't the volcanic stuff, is it? This is like the, well probably is volcanic, but it's much harder, more dense. Oh yeah, yeah. Well this one, you can see the air pockets. This one's very dense. And this could be one of the candidates for the stone that he suggests came out of the ocean. The ocean being there. And as Matt pointed out, there are drill holes, or seemingly pounded holes, like here. Also here. So in relation to other Ahu platforms that we've seen, these, if this follows the same pattern, then these were actually not lying flat, they were vertical. And for this expedition with Megalithomania, Hidden Inca Tours, this is our last stop before we get on a plane and head back to Lima, Peru. Something else Matt has just found, Matt being this gentleman, that he's Hi. found these very even holes. Uh, we don't know how deep they are, but there's that circular hole, this quite circular hole. And then this oblong one, which would be incredibly difficult to do with uh, adzes out of basalt, since this itself is basalt. It's a very curious discovery here in the weeds on Rapa Nui. How about this circular one, Matt? That's not big. Oop. That's the rectangle. Okay. It's a circular. Ah, excellent.